Hello everyone and welcome to another episode of Chewing the Brew. This afternoon I will be enjoying the... I don't know, will I be enjoying it? I assume I will. I suppose that sets my mindset. This very active bottle of Omegong Everything Nice. Limited release Belgian strong... Belgian... Or, Belgian. There's nothing Belgian on this. Strong blonde ale with seasonal spices and natural and artificial flavors. I actually didn't notice the artificial until just now. And goodness gracious, this thing just wants to keep going. I already had to pour something off the top of this bottle. But uh, I believe it's probably bottle conditioned. Um, some of you might recall I posted a, or I did a, like just an, an Instagram review of a Duvel, Duvel. Single fermentation Duvel, which is kind of the original Belgian strong blonde ale. Uh, the Duvel is typically a double fermented beer. Um, that was a single fermented variant of Duvel. And so that was a, it's a strong, pretty heavy for a light beer, light colored beer. Um, beer. And it was pretty tasty. It was really nice. Uh, I recall it being dry and some other flavors and notes that I can't recall off the top of my head. Um, I'm expecting this to be, I'm expecting, this is the same family of beer. It is a strong blonde ale, which is a Belgian style, that is a relatively recent invention in uh, beer history, and heavy and strong and thick and toothsome. Um, and when filtration became a thing, and as lighter colored beers, became a thing, Belgians had to move with the market. And so the Duvel was developed, and that was a super popular um, beer. And others, they, they filtered, they used lighter malts, and so they produced these lighter colored, but still very Belgian strong beers. So Amagong is a New York brewery, and not a Belgian brewery, but they're known for their Belgian style strong beers. There's several very delicious Omegongs, um, and you'll find them in big bottles, like for aging and such. Um, <laughs> this thing just wants to keep going. Um, I am going to suck the top off this, so I have something besides head in my pour, and then we'll pour it and see how it smells and all that. Hmm. Some interesting flavors going on there. But let's pour this and see what's going on here. Um, to the nose, there's some fruits, like stone fruits, like light colored stone fruits, apricots, peaches maybe. It's a it's a surprisingly sweet smelling beer, but not not like you'd expect a. a uh, barrel aged stout, not that thick sweetness, more of a, a fruity sweetness. Um, dried fruits, actually, like dried apricot. Maybe some raisin, like golden raisin. I don't know if you've smelled or tasted the difference between a regular dark raisin and a golden raisin, but golden raisins, raisins tend to be brighter than, than the dark raisins. There's a little bit of maybe a spice coming through, maybe cinnamon or nutmeg, like a, a mild kind of spice coming through the nose. But it smells pretty good. Ooh, interesting. Okay, vanilla, marshmallow, fruits, those same fruits, um, stone fruits, but maybe a little bit of plum in this as well as kind of the dried apricot, um, but it's like there's this vanilla warmth running through it. So this is a 9% ABV, so I'm not going to expect the alcohol to play a part in here, but it tastes like, it, instead of like an alcohol burn, it's like a, a vanilla extract kind of underlying the whole thing. And there's a, a woodsiness, um, or woodiness, like a Maybe cedar? The, the aftertaste is 
uh, like clove and allspice, like warm, warm spices. That's that's really that's really interesting. This it has I think maybe three distinct uh, places or uh, three distinct stops on the on the flavor train. It starts with a juiciness, then there's this kind of uh, bitter interlude where you have this woody character that comes through, and then you're left with these warm like allspice and and clove kind of spices. And underneath it all is this kind of vanilla extract that's really interesting. That the fruitiness is really bright and vibrant, and so it tastes almost almost juicy, but but dried fruit juicy, if if that's a thing. Um, like it, it's fruity, but it's it's dried fruit, so it's not juicy. It's dried fruit, um, and then it has this kind of bitter. And I'm I'm not sure. It doesn't really taste like a hot bitterness. It tastes more like a um, a yeast funky bitterness, which being a Belgian style, Belgians are all about the yeast. So that's, that's probably what that is. And then this kind of warming, warm spice finish on that. That's really, really quite, quite tasty. Yeah. Yeah. That's a good beer. That's a very tasty beer. It's bright enough that you don't have to be, you know, on a cold evening huddled next to your fire to enjoy this. Um, it'll work on, you know, a nice day outside. Uh, I mean, <laughs> staying close to home because of that 9%, you're not driving anywhere. Um, uh, it'll go probably nicely with a, a cheese tray, like a, a cheese platter of some sort. Uh, just those you know dried fruits and such go really nicely with cheese and nuts and crackers and such uh, so i think that would go really not that would work really well um, this is just kind of a, a celebration beer definitely it's it's you drink it when there's people around you drink it with your friends um and and it's just part of a good party that's that's a good beer i like this beer quite a lot i like it quite a lot this is omegong's everything nice um but I, I recommend opening it and pouring it right away. Don't let it sit with the cap off the bottle because uh, that was a very um, lively yeast culture that wanted to continue producing <laughs> bubbles. Um, anyways, this is Omegong's Everything Nice, a holiday release from o Omegong Brewery in New York. Omegong is usually pretty easy to find at most bottle shops or a lot of bottle shops. Um, I mean, here I am in the Northwest and it's coming from all across the country. So it shouldn't be too hard to find. And all their beers are special. I have not found an Omegong, I've not drunk an Omegong that I didn't like um, or that wasn't interesting. They tend to be on the pricier side. With a smaller bottle like this, it's it's probably more accessible. But if you're having a party, you want the big bottle anyways, right? Because you're sharing. Um, anyways, this is Matthew. I've been true in the brew. And I'll catch you all on the flip side.